An update now on former Dolphins and Rams running back Isaiah Peed. He is in critical but stable condition after a car accident this morning on I-670. Police say Peed's car went through a guardrail, went airborne, and hit several trees on the way. 911, what is the location of your emergency? We just saw a car totally wipe out and crash. It's on the side of the road. I can't see it. It's a, it's a totally fucking crash. Okay. Are they trapped in the car? They fell into this. I think they are. They're screaming. We're, we just pulled over. We saw the whole thing fucking happen. Like, oh my God. <laughs> There's some running room for Pete, and he's off. Isaiah Pete high steps into the end zone. Touchdown, Bearcats. I just had my son. He was born November 5th on a Saturday. I had a workout with uh, the Chiefs the following Monday. So I had to fly out Sunday. Get to the airport a little late. We were missing a flight, so we scheduled another flight in Cincinnati. Not able to make that flight. You know, just missing opportunity. You know, I went that whole week. You know, just being a new dad, you know, learning how to, you know, be a father. So Friday comes, uh, it's late, and uh, my friend comes over, came into town, he wanted to see my car. So we go out, you know, going a little above the speed limit, we hit a bump, hit a bump, started to swerve, and I uh, was about to hit the wall, and I remember catching the wheel and, and getting us back outside, but the freeway was curving left. We went out the guardrail, through the guardrail. I blacked out right there. The guardrail came through the car and, and trapped both my legs. So as I'm going out sideways, you know, this leg snapped off, but this leg kind of just snapped back. <laughs> it didn't snap off. I tore my knee. It was left in the armrest. After the car settled, you know, my friend, like I say, he never blacked out. He looks for me and seen that the whole car was, the back seat was gone. I don't remember it. Luckily, <laughs> otherwise, yeah, that'll be, that'll be a memory that I wouldn't want to remember. You know? When I woke up, I got a tube in my mouth, so I can't really speak. My heart rate and my, you know, the monitors were going up, so the doctor would sedate me. After a couple of the sedations, my mom kind of told the doctor, uh, you know, don't do that. Just let him know what's going on or whatever. And, you know, asked for a pen and paper, and uh, I started asking, you know, what's going on. I think my mom was the one that told me, uh, you know, you were in a car accident and um, you lost your leg. You know, what, what, is, what does this mean? What's going on? Help me, help me understand what I don't understand. I was living out my, my dream and I was going to blow out my own candle. I didn't get to do that. I did want to get in competitive sports, you know, definitely the Paralympics. That's the first thing that comes to mind when you're an amputee. Once I started getting comfortable with walking and the leg and just the prosthetic part of it, once I got comfortable with that, then I wanted to you know, obviously start getting a running leg. They specialize in above the knee amputees, which is me. They wanted to create a, you know, a, a walking leg for me. You want it to fit perfect. But if it doesn't fit perfect, you can still get by. But a running leg <laughs> is do or die, you know. You just gotta wake up with that fire, with that, with that chip, um, because you're at a disadvantage. Out there, a couple moments where I was striking it right, it fit right, and yeah, I felt, I felt normal. Seeing 
that there's other life other than football. Now I actually, you know, have to go through it and finding out, yeah, there is other life other than football, you know. It's, it's, I'm, I found a happy life. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I've been reborn. You know, I'm still able. You know, I just got a short limb, but uh, I feel like I can still you know, compete at the highest level and still be a champion.